Hello, thanks for joining me today. I'm Pat Speth, author of the Nickel Quilt Books, and I love scrappy quilts, and I love to use five inch squares in many of the quilts that I make. The quilt here, the Big Dipper quilt, I demoed this in my last video showing how the Big Dipper block goes together step by step. Now in my quilt, I used five inch squares of stash fabrics, but this quilt would also be perfect for using up charm packs. As I travel and teach, many of my workshop participants will come to class with stacks of charm packs and ask me which of the quilts that I'm offering in the, the workshop that day would be the best use of the charm pack that they're using. Yes, this Big Dipper block is great for uh, the five inch squares, the charm packs, and not only is it good for utilizing some of the five inch squares out of the charm pack, but utilizing all the fabrics within a charm pack. Here are a couple Big Dipper blocks. And within each block, I wanted to keep the darks consistent and also the lights consistent. In order to do that, we need two dark five inch squares that are the same, two lighter five inch squares that are the same. Um, identical squares of the light, identical squares of the dark. I normally refer to these identical squares as pairs. So this would be a pair of the lighter squares and a pair of the darker squares. When using charm packs, and when you need two identical five inch squares, you are going to require, it does require buying two identical charm packs. Now in the Moda charm packs, there are usually uh, the 42 five inch squares. Within two charm packs, that, that's not enough to make a quilt. So I like to, if I'm making a quilt out of charm packs, start adding in other collections. Uh, sometimes this happens to be a collection from fig tree quilts. Adding in other collections from the same designer, many times the, the colors, the fabrics will coordinate. Or adding in collections from other designers when you just want to pump up the uh, variety and diversity in the prints and the colors that you're using is fun too. What I do first when I'm organizing the squares from two different charm packs is I simply remove uh, the squares, one from each pack, set that aside, then the next one, the next identical set, give that a turn, the next identical set, and I'm just going to be stacking these up for now and giving every other one a turn so that later when I am organizing them into lights, mediums, and darks, I can grab these a little bit faster and I just work through the entire set of the five inch squares and the charm packs like that. Once I have all the squares matched up into identical pairs, I go ahead and separate them into lights, mediums, and darks. Every collection is going to be a little bit different as far as the ratio of the lights and the mediums and the darks. And I have a set here all separated out for us to take a look at. This charm pack collection happens to be Breakfast at Tiffany's from Fig Tree and Company for Moda. I've separated them out into what I consider lights, mediums, and darks. Um, I have my lights over here, mediums, and then darks. And I was a little bit surprised at the fact that there are only six darks in this collection. And what did I come up with? 15 lights and 21 mediums to work with. When I start sorting these out into pairs that are going to work nicely together within a, the blocks, normally I look for the prints that I think are going to be a little bit harder to match up with something. And at first I thought it was maybe going to be this one tone on tone because there's really this real deep dark one. But when I started uh, auditioning it next to other fabrics, you know, this is going to go as a nice contrast to many of the prints in this collection, so I'm not going to be concerned about that. Then I realized, okay, I have, what did I calculate? Uh, 15 lights, <laughs> 15 of the fabrics that I call lights. So I think I'm going to work with uh, matching up my lights to my mediums 
and my darks. Within these prints, we've got polka dots. And I think with the polka dots, this is something I'm going to want to coordinate with something while I have a, a real nice selection out here of prints. So I'm going to work with the polka dots first. For me, this is the fun part when I start picking and choosing, holding fabrics next to something else to see how it coordinates. And as I'm doing this, I utilize paper plates. I'll be stacking up on individual paper plates my uh, selections as I've decided on them. You know, so something like this looks pretty good. I could go with just a little bit of the smaller print if I wanted to. I think I'll go ahead and do that for this one. And I just work my way through all of the prints in that manner. The blue polka dots, I think. I'm looking for something maybe that ha none of the green prints have blue in them. There's one of these prints over here. This has got a little bit of blue. I, I like the looks of that. I'm going to go ahead and go with that for now. By utilizing the paper plates, uh, and I don't stitch my blocks together until I have all of the fabric sorted. And by utilizing paper plates then, uh, or file folders, whatever you happen to have on hand, I am able to, when it gets down to just the last few prints in the collection, if I were to have, let's say, just the, the blue tone on tones left, or uh, like the calico prints left, I could go ahead and swap out uh, fabrics from other sets before I start sewing anything together. So I uh, sort out the entire collection that way first. The Big Dipper block is made up of the hourglass units. So when sorting these fabrics, it, and since we are sorting, there's uh, two fabrics each time, we can quickly audition what the hourglass would look like. And here are some more polka dots I still need to use up. And there's something like this. So you can not only set it right next to it, you can also get a little bit better idea and actually start making your uh, audition piece look like the hourglass unit. The hourglass unit, I also want to point out, is a good spot to use up some smaller prints because our pieces are getting a little bit smaller. The hourglass unit itself is going to finish at three and a half inches. We square it up to four inches and it'll finish at three and a half inches. To give you an idea on how many charm packs it might take for your quilt, the lap size Big Dipper quilt has 41 blocks in it and each time we are making um, the Big Dipper quilt one set, uh, two identical charm packs, is enough fabric to make 21 blocks. So for the lap size, it has 41 blocks in it. So it's going to need uh, two pairs of charm packs or four charm packs in total. The full size Big Dipper quilt has 83 blocks in it. It is going to need uh, four pairs one, two, three, four pairs, or eight total blocks. The uh, the queen size, or you could actually also, am I, am I running out of room here? Uh, could call it a king because my queen is a 106 inches by 106 inches. That is 113 blocks. It is going to require a total of is this, yeah, these are all showing. Wonderful. It's going to require a total of six pairs or 12 charm packs altogether. So a lot of good places to use up charm pack collections if you have those in your stash and you love working with them. 
information for ordering the books that all the instructions for the Big Dipper quilt in three sizes are included in it will be coming up next. Also, the next video I will be posting will be on a quilt that also can use charm packs and using all the prints within a charm pack. And I'll be posting that in the next week or so. So go ahead and make sure you subscribe so you're no notified when my next videos come out. And until I post my next video, have fun making your quilts. All the information for making the Big Dipper quilt in three different sizes can be found in the books Nickel Quilts and the Big Book of Nickel Quilts. These books, as well as all my other books and patterns, can be ordered from my website. I've included a link to my website below in the video description area. When you purchase a book from my website, you can receive a free pattern of your choice from any of my published patterns. Write the name of the pattern in the inscription area next to your book selection. One free pattern per book purchased. Yes, if you purchase more than one book, you may select a free pattern for each book purchased. You must write in the pattern name at the time of purchase. If a pattern name is not written in, a free pattern will not be shipped after the book is shipped. Purchases from my website will help fund the creation and production of more Nickel Quilt videos for all to enjoy and learn from. Thank you.